In this last lecture series on the brain, we're going to look at cranial nerves. Now, we've already talked about the cranial nerves in the context of the brainstem. Uh, we looked at the different nuclei, uh, four in the medulla, four in the pons, and then uh, we had uh, two more in the uh, midbrain, and then we have the optic nerve and the olfactory nerve, olfactory bulb sometimes it's referred to. So those are the 12 cranial nerves. Uh, we can divide them into those that are just sensory, those that are just motor, and those that are mixed. So pretty easy this way. Cranial nerve number one is the olfactory nerve. Cranial nerve number two is optic. And then cranial nerve number eight, that's the vestibular cochlear nerve. That's the nerve that innervates your cochlea in your inner ear and your semicircular canals in the inner ear. Uh, semicircular circular canals maintain your balance. And then the cochlea is where the sound waves, pressure waves are converted into nerve impulses for hearing. So think of olfaction, um, the sight, and then hearing. Those are cranial nerve one, two, and eight. Then we have the cranial nerves that are motor only. So that would be cranial nerve number three, ocular motor, that innervates the eye. So does four, and so does six. So these innervate the muscles around the eyeball to turn it left and right, up and down, uh, and so forth. Uh, cranial nerve number three also innervates the iris and uh, affects pupillary constriction and so forth. Uh, cranial nerve number 11, accessory nerve. Think of that as the nerve that's necessary to shrug your shoulders, uh, move the shoulders and some of the neck muscles. And then 12 is hypoglossal, that regulates the muscles in your tongue. So when you stick out your tongue, you're actually testing the hypoglossal nerve. If your tongue deviates to one side or another, that might indicate a potential lesion in one side of the brain or another of the hypoglossal nerve. And then we have four cranial nerves that are mixed, and they have both sensory and motor fibers. So I'll start first with cranial nerve number 10. That's the vagus nerve. That's the big one that innervates, carries your parasympathetic impulses down to your heart, lungs, and all of your abdominal viscera. But remember, there are about 80% of those fibers are sensory as well. So vagus is a mixed nerve. Um, cranial nerve number five, trigeminal, we think of that usually as a sensory nerve. That's the uh, innervates the three regions of the face. It has three branches. And remember the ganglia are actually located right in front of the ears on either side of the face. Um, but the trigeminal nerve is sensory, but it also has motor fibers that innervate the jaw muscles, the masseter. Um, so that's involved in chewing. And then cranial nerve number seven, facial. We think of that one usually as motor. Um, that's motor to the face. So remember, Bell's palsy is a condition that affects cranial nerve number seven, and we get drooping of the face and the eyelid and so forth. Um, and so cranial nerve number seven is important for that. Uh, when it comes to the eyelid, cranial nerve number seven pulls the eyelid down. Uh, cranial nerve number three holds it up. You can kind of think of seven like a hook that pulls it down, and then three is like a pillar that holds it up. So that's just on the eyelid. And then finally, uh, the facial nerve, that's the motor, it also has sensory fibers to the tongue. So this in innervates most of your tongue and your taste receptors on the tongue. And then we have the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve number nine, which again is mixed motor and sensory. And so that the motor part innervates your pharynx, your pharyngeal musculature, and the sensory is the posterior part of the tongue. So cranial nerve number seven is anterior and middle part of the tongue sensory. Cranial nerve number nine is posterior part of the tongue. So if you go to medical school, you know one of the things they have you do is memorize these cranial nerves and how to what they do, uh, where all their nuclei begin, <clears throat> and then how to test for them. So we're not going to go into that much detail, but it is important to know what the twelve cranial nerves are, which ones are sensory only. Uh, remember that's cranial nerve one, two, and eight. Which ones are motor only? And so that's going to be these uh, five cranial nerves, the three that innervate the eyeball, three, four, and six, and then accessory and hypoglossal. And then the mixed nerves, five, seven, nine, and ten. Uh, so this diagram kind of points out a bunch of them. Uh, so you see here, for example, cranial nerve number one, that's again the olfactory bulb. And they that's kind of weird because they come into the limbic system, and so they're not going directly to the brainstem. And then cranial nerve number two, that's the optic nerve. And uh, here actually is the uh, pituitary. <clears throat> and uh, uh, looking back here, I think this is depicting the uh, pons right here and going down to the brainstem and so forth. Um, so that's optic nerve number two. And then we have, so cranial nerve three, 
four, and six. These are all motor to the eye. Um, and then trigeminal nerve. This is sensory to the face and the sinuses and the teeth. And you can see in the picture here the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve. So we usually talk about the uh, branches associated more with your jaw. And then there's a middle branch, and then there's an optical branch up here by your eye. And remember, herpes viruses can infect the trigeminal nerve. And the ganglia for each of these nerves, the nuclei where the nerve begins is in the brainstem, remember, but the ganglia where there are cell bodies that the nuclei project to in the brainstem are here. And then we have nerves that come out to each of these regions. And the herpes virus can infect the ganglia right here. Uh, so it can then erupt and via uh, enterograde or retrograde transport, go or enterograde transport, I'm sorry, go back through the end of the neuron and can erupt on the surface of the skin. So that's the sensory part of the trigeminal. The motor is for the muscles of mastication. And then we have uh, facial nerve number seven. This is muscles to the face, but also muscle uh, sensory to the tongue, the um, anterior and the middle part of the tongue. And then hypoglossal is muscles to the tongue. Uh, and then going, going around here, accessory, again, that's uh, going to innervate your sternocleidomastoid, which turns the head, and your trapezius. So if you just shrug shoulders, and if you have equal symmetry on shoulder shrugging, the accessory nerve is intact. Uh, and then the vagus nerve we talked about being mixed um, with motor and sensory. And then uh, we have cranial nerve number eight, which is sensory only. And then glossopharyngeal nerve, um, and uh, that's cranial nerve number nine both motor and sensory. Now there is a part of the facial nerve, I said, you know, in this particular diagram, facial is depicted down here as motor only, but there is something which we usually associate with the facial called the intermediate uh, nerve, and that's depicted here. And that's gonna be motor basically to the, the salivary glands, so submaxillary and sublingual glands, and then sensory to the anterior part of the tongue and the soft palate. But again, we usually consider that as part of the facial nerve. All right, so that's the 12 cranial nerves. Here's another representation of the same thing. Um, so olfactory, number one, is sensory only to olfaction, smell. Uh, optic is sensory only to vision easy enough. And then again, cranial nerve number eight, vestibular cochlear, that's sensory only to equilibrium and hearing. Uh, cranial nerve number three, four, and six, the ocular motor trochlear abducens nerves are uh, basically serving the muscles of the, uh, of the eyeball. So we usually think, I, I just said in the previous video, that they're motors. So this is not exactly correct. There's some visceral sensory, but we'll uh, we'll just look at the motor components here. And then um, trigeminal nerve number five, this is motor and sensory, sensory to the face, motor to the jaw. And then facial nerve number seven, including the intermediate nerve, that's motor and sensory to the motor to the face and the salivary glands, the lacrimal glands, and um, as well as sensory to the anterior part of the tongue. And then we have glossal pharyngeal number nine, which is motor and sensory to the pharynx. So that's motor to the pharynx, so regulates swallowing, and uh, sensory to the posterior third of the tongue. It also innervates the parotid gland. So the uh, facial innervates the other salivary glands, and then glossopharyngeal innervates the parotid. And then the vagus nerve, mixed uh, motor and sensory, and we talked about the accessory for the shoulders, hypoglossal to the tongue. Um, this is also, this, is, these, this diagram is not correct, so this should be sensory. Uh, or motor only. Okay, so that summarizes it for the cranial nerves. Now we're gonna uh, just briefly touch back on this again when we look at the what's called the neurological exam. Uh, checking cranial nerves is one part of the neuro exam. So when people go in for a neuro exam, it's a we do several different steps, and one of them is to check the function of all of these. So we actually run through all these different things pretty quickly. It takes about 45 seconds to a minute uh, to check all that. Um, so that'll be part of the um, cranial nerve or the, uh, the cranial nerve exam is part of the neuro exam. So that wraps it up for the brain. Uh, all the relevant information you need to know that we can then take further in the neurology sections when we start looking at different neurological disorders.